Hey, Josh here with Crypto Y'all, and the following video is a weekly coaching call that I do every single week with my Get Paid Daily Mastermind members. So if you're crypto curious, you want to create passive income, you want multiple streams of income, and you want to create that supplemental wealth, maybe you want your money to work harder than you do, well, join me every week for my weekly coaching calls. How do you do that? Well, you have to be a member of Get Paid Daily. What does that look like? Join my free case study over at CryptoYall.co. Check it out. Watch the case study. If you like what you see, schedule a call with me. Moi, one-on-one -on -one video call. It's application only. It's invite only. But uh, if you want to be a member, that's what it takes. So check out this video. Enjoy the, the value and the relevancy of this market update. And hopefully, I'll see you soon. Yeah, lots of red in the altcoin market today on uh, Wednesday, October 11th. Uh, happy to have everyone along for the ride. Now, um, where are we? We're at a very interesting place. And so I want to start our call with kind of a macroeconomic, um, uh, I guess, peak at, at, at the markets and also just kind of patternistically observe where we are. Uh, over the last week, altcoins have been taking a pretty good hit. Um, over the last month, we're still in the green. Daily, we're in the red for the, for the lion's share of them. We're at this really weird crossroad um, with the entire market. Um, and it's interesting. And one of the... Um, technical analyst that I like to follow. His name is Blockchain Backer. I think he's one of the most sober and uh, data-driven guys um, out there, especially when it comes to looking at the technical side of charts and the markets. And for weeks, he's been drawing this, um, this parallel between uh, the 2014 to 2016 uh, cycle with the current cycle that we're in now. And I wanted to, cause he, he, he tweeted, um, about an, uh, well, earlier this, a few hours ago, um, really the, the imagery of the charts, again, history never repeats itself, but it does rhyme. And what we found is that some of these cycles that we've been in are rhyming with each other. So for example, the one that we're in right now, does not rhyme very well with the 2019 to 2021 cycle. It just, it's different. You also have in the current cycle that we've been in a crypto winter that was artificially um, manufactured by two things. The um, really the highest increase of federal interest rates in history. That's really kind of, that's actually, that's really kind of the main thing. And then the second thing was the FTX scandal and fiasco, like in, in some of the other bad actors of 2022 that, that kind of all came to the head at the same time, three arrows, capital, Terra Luna, the list goes on FTX and SBF being the, the major culprits there. So with those two things, it kind of artificially brought on this 500 plus day crypto winter that we've experienced. It really all started, ironically, in December of 2021, when interest rates started going up, the, the DXY started to climb in, in, in strength and Bitcoin started to gradually collapse. And with that, it brought down the total crypto market cap. Well, let, let me read this. The parallels between now and 2014, 2016 have been amazing on the Bitcoin chart. Each major milestone for Bitcoin in 2021 to 2023 has had shockingly accurate timing with 14 to 16. Today marks one of those days of will it continue? Literally, he's saying today, October 11th, 2023. In 2016, the range finally escaped right here. So... 
let's look at this image. Um, hopefully it'll it'll be large enough on the screen share here for you to be able to see it. So you can kind of see how he charts out the the peaks or the local tops here with the yellow circles. It's very similar. Um, I believe, yeah, green is the 2014 to 2016. And then of course the uh, the top line is our current where we where we are currently in 2023. And here's where we are. This is the culmination. Um, and so this dotted line that goes vertical up the screen and this dotted line that goes vertical represents a 200 day range. And so it, we're not saying it will, but you know, the question is what margin of error is here in this? In is it, is it a, a day or two? Is it on the day immediately? Like we have some big economic news coming out today, Thursday, Friday, we got big earnings. We've got CPI reports. There's just a lot of catalysts waiting in the wings. We also have Middle East stuff. We have Ukraine stuff. We have a lot of geopolitical uncertainty uh, that could make the money printers turn back on. There's just all of this, um, just a lot of I get, I, what I would call pregnant ca uh, variables. And then you've got this chart that has, I mean, y'all, this is since this chart, these two charts, let's not, let's be very clear. Go back to April of 2021, April of 2021. So more than two years, like two and a half years of rhyming here. Like imagine if you could go back two years and know that these two charts were going to rhyme with each other and how much money you could make. Like, this is the future. This is the fortune teller stuff. Like, look at this. Look right here. These are, these are two years apart. You know, again, they rhyme. There's not always like, then you've got moments like this and this that, that are a little more inverse that, that don't, but like mathematically speaking, there is some kind of Pareto principle, fractal, something golden, golden thread happening here that um, makes the uh, blockchain backer here, this creator uh, and and technical analyst, he he's going, you know, it's highly pot. He's not saying it will happen. He's not saying anything with certainty. Um, he's just saying there's a lot of confluence here, and we're at this point where things started to just absolutely skyrocket back in 2006 2014 2015 so just wanted to point that out are we are we there is that where we are currently what is there something big about to happen um it's just an interesting whoops there goes my uh, microphone it's just an interesting thing to entertain as an investor um because here's what i don't Here's what I do not practice, or at least I try not to, because emotionally it's just not a good idea. Um, and no one in history has done this well, which is time the top perfectly and time the bottom perfectly. And, you know, I've said this time and time again, people try to treat crypto like a casino or like a, a craps table or a poker table. And there's these moments of emotional euphoria and bliss where you're like this this is the this is the the investment the moment the amount of money the this is my payday this is it i'm going all in to the middle of the table on this particular thing and i think what i've found especially when you're starting when you're looking at the macro stuff is um to buy and sell in areas of the market or the chart. Okay. Um, buy and sell in areas of the chart. And that's, that's uh, a more appropriate thing. So now, so what, so why do I say that? Well, because what I'm, what I'm trying to do with the blockchain backer info, for example, is I'm trying to go, okay, what are my areas that I'm dealing with? Where am I generally? Okay, even if I'm a week or two or even a month of, you know, give or take error here, 
where am I? I know I'm in the quote unquote October currently and October hasn't really played out yet. We're almost halfway through. So there's like, if it's going to happen, it's going to happen. Like we're going to get a big push um, or we could get, um, it's always one way or the other, right? We could get a, a, you know, like in this, this part of the, uh, the cycle we've seen, we could get a big dump when the 14, 15, 16 cycle was going up right here. There's always these areas of divergence, but then eventually or patternistically it recorrects and generally mimics in this, in this illustration, the previous, the, two, the 2014 to 2016 cycle. So, you know, you might go, all right, well, um, you know, right here, we're due, we might be at this, like, if you go back in time to this point in 2022, we're due um, an acceleration. And then, boom, you get a massive, you know, red candle here. And you're like, oh, crap. And you panic and you sell. And you're trying, again, you're trying to be very like uh, acute and forensic with your buying and selling. And that's where you go, oh, shoot, I'm out of here. And I sell and I take my losses and I get wrecked. When in reality, if I'd have just held on, there's the rhyme right there that I was waiting on back here. And it's just a matter of time horizon and mindset that screwed me over. So that's 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 why we buy in areas and it's really important. So I'll get off my soapbox. Here's the DXY um, that we always look at. The dollar started to roll over here at 107.1. It really went a lot higher than we wanted it to. So it could um, very easily, this is a, the daily chart. So this is kind of like looking at it with a 30-day mindset. Um, if it bounces off the top of this channel, it means Bitcoin's got, got uglier days ahead of it. But if it keeps if if it keeps getting correcting back down into this channel, then then we'll see um, we'll see something good. Uh, let's see what Bitcoin says right this second. So yeah, Bitcoin's uh, flirting with that support line of twenty seven thousand. Uh, emotionally, when you're looking at Bitcoin, basically every $1,000 is what I've found to be the uh, support and resistance lines. Uh, let's take a look at our FIB levels real quick. Yeah, so next stop would be 26.5. And then um, really a lot of people are thinking we might get this little flush down to 24,000 something uh, before we see an October. So again, just be, you know, be prepared mentally. If if we see a, a dump to 24,000, your altcoins are going to get hammered pretty hard. So, you know, just panic selling, not good for your portfolio. Um, What else did I have for you? Um, I, was, I think I was going to pull up see if there was any um, announcements here. So wholesale inflation rose half a percent in September, which was more than expected. Dow Jones is um, down a little bit. Markets are kind of really, I guess, unchanged. We want to pay attention more than ever. Um, right now, the, uh, the, 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 the correlation between the stock market, especially the Dow Jones industrial and Bitcoin. That's something we want to pay attention to really more than ever. So that's kind of the um, the long and short of it. Uh, I've said this, I've, I feel like I've said this a lot over the last 500 days, like we're kind of on this razor's edge with Bitcoin, especially if you look at the blockchain backer illustration that I started with, like we could go either way here and uh, in the short term. Long term, I think we're 20, 25% of the way into the bull market. I think right now is an awesome area to be accumulating crypto and to be stacking as much as possible. And uh, I would refer back to your altcoin portfolio and just think about the awesome potential investments that you want to take advantage of as we move into 
this bull run. I think 2024 is going to be really special personally. Um, that's how I'm managing my investments. And I'm probably going to make one of my largest capital deployments in the next few weeks um, coming up. I'm kind of waiting to see what Bitcoin does. And uh, I'll be buying some tokens that are highly speculative and low market cap that I believe, again, they're you know part of some of the lists that we've created here at Get Paid Daily in the Mastermind and that we've got available in our 100x challenge. Uh, I'm going to be investing or doubling down there uh, personally, and I'll make that available to our members for sure when I make those moves. But this is, we're kind of moving into that season where if we can get not necessarily certainty, and as you can see, we just broke down below 27,000. So uh, we're, we're flirting with it, with that line there with Bitcoin. But um, as we move into this season, you know, we're expecting a strong Q4, but it's like a strong Q4, I, you know, that could mean a 30, 4,000 to 40 to 34 to 39,000 Bitcoin, maybe. And then I think really in the new year is where we start the fireworks, when we start moving into the, the having and we start getting more institutional, uh, especially when the BlackRock ETF gets approved. That's really kind of the, the next base camp, if you will, for uh, extreme Bitcoin adoption. So, and I, I, I want to underscore like the, the, the BlackRock ETF that's a really big deal. People don't realize how large BlackRock is and how much institutional money exposure they can bring, um, especially even compared to the other eight or nine institutions that have applied to uh, for a spot ETF with the SEC. Like BlackRock is truly, uh, outside of fidelity, I think, like they just have more assets under management than anybody in the world, larger than most nations on the planet. And so it's important to understand that it's a really big deal. And we are living, we are living on the right side of history currently. So life-changing money is possible with crypto. If you play your cards right, you don't get emotional and you just pay attention right now. If all you did was hold the correct altcoins and sell when all of the other neighbors and friends of yours who aren't currently invested in crypto start asking about crypto, that's when you sell. Uh, you'll make a you'll make you'll make an incredible returns on your investment. So we're moving. We're in the season right now of accumulation. We honestly have been in that for a while. And if you look at if you just look back at Bitcoin's performance over the last year. Uh, or year to date, even. Let me pull this up. <clears throat> you know, Bitcoin has performed nobly uh, since the beginning of the year. If I go to January 1st to now, it's up 65% on the year at its highest performance so far this year, it was up 94% back in July. So just imagine accumulating Bitcoin, just Bitcoin could have gotten, could have doubled your money, but double your money isn't always, you know, for people with lower net worth or trying to make a lot of ground up, you know, Bitcoin's not there. Ironically, altcoins haven't had their day in the sun. We had a little fun with altcoins back in the spring. But um, it, it hasn't been alt season yet, and we're due an alt season. So Bitcoin's got to break through. It's got to it's got to it's got to get above thirty thousand, in my opinion, and it's got to hold and close there for um, several days, if not a week. And then from there, I think it's up. And when you start going up like that, then the Bitcoin dominance factor starts to. Uh, modify and then people start rolling into altcoins more confidently. You start getting your your um, your your profits there from your lower market caps. And I would just encourage you to remember um, if you haven't 
Um, if you haven't already, I want to point out a particular place in our training area, our mastermind training area that sometimes people neglect, especially during seasons. Um, and with all the hype of passive income and, um, you know, FOMO and people saying things on social media and just trying to get their acts to get, you know, trying to keep up with the Joneses. Um, people just forget that one of the best ways to make incredible money these days is just having your altcoin portfolio in place and having your allocations and your, in like your, your, your crypto investing thesis, like what do you believe and what are you observing and what do you see as the emerging patterns and what can be the, what, what can be the 10 X, the 50 X, the 20 X, the, you know, 52 X opportunity. So, um, in our training area here at get paid daily, if you have not, um, watch this short training. If you haven't thought through your alt season prep chart, um, doesn't mean you have to rush out and buy everything right now, but it does mean that you need to at least stage your wallet or stage your portfolio in such a way that you've got, you've got a good, uh, head, head on your shoulders and you've got your percentages and you have your profits taking strategy, uh, worked out. You know, if I buy, you know, Solana at X price and it goes to X price, I'm going to take 20, 25%. And then if it goes to another price, I'm going to take another 35%. If it goes to another price, I'm going to take 50 more and keep taking profits on the way up. Well, in order to have a profit taking strategy, you need a profitable altcoin portfolio. In order to have that, it's can't, you can't be, you know, sitting around waiting and scared on the sidelines because everything feels scary because there's rockets in the Middle East and, you know, crazy stuff happening all over the world and the mainstream media has got you brainwashed. You got to be ready when there's, you know, when, when people are fearful, be greedy. And so that doesn't mean invest carelessly. It means invest responsibly and strategically. And one of our best trainings for this upcoming season that we're in, ironically, is just how do you how do you have your alt altcoins organized and and what are you looking at in order to do that? So that alt season maximum gain strategy, it's a big deal right now moving into the season that we're in. All right, um, wrapping up. One last fun thing I dropped this in our in our member area the other day. Um, I jumped into wild X, um, which is a, or wild base, which is a farming, uh, protocol. I did an instructional tutorial on this. It's in the yield farming channel, uh, in our, <clears throat> excuse me, in our discord group, it's on the base network, Coinbase's blockchain, uh, low gas fees, uh, this is not the first protocol of this this team. It's 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 very simple, but it's it's got some pretty um, pretty witty. I would call it witty or intelligent tokenomics. Um, I don't think it's one of those things though that is going to last forever. So I'm kind of just um, I'm kind of just milking it for the time being. I put a little bit of money in. It's not one of those things I would just go all in. But this is the Wild X token. The 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 price is strong for those of you who are in Giddy. I would I would uh, I would say this is a very familiar or similar structure, except the difference is it has a sales tax. So when you go to sell, you're going to have a six percent tax, but that six percent tax, per their documentation and their rhetoric, is uh, they're they're burning tokens or they're they're reducing the circulating supply. So a lot of people who got in at launch have 100 X their dollars, which is pretty cool. Uh, they got in back in September and I know a lot of people in our group were even talking about it. I hope some, I hope some folks got in on it. I, uh, if I'm not very familiar with a launch, I rarely buy it after the launch. I like to see it correct like this. And then I'll, I'll start to get in and start farming once the dust is settled and there's some normalcy. 
Um, where does it, where does that token go from here? Who the heck knows? Uh, it is an altcoin. It will follow Bitcoin. Ultimately, the liquidity though seems pretty strong. It's got $360,000 of liquidity and the market cap is lower than its liquidity. That's a really healthy mix. You won't see that a lot in altcoins. It's usually the other way around. There's usually a huge market cap with a low liquidity because the market cap represents a level of speculation. So um, what we do here is you've got a single stake and a dual stake. Uh, this was two days ago. I mean, just to show you, the APR was $11,000 when I cut the video and did did my initial investment. And it's it's dropped down to 52000 because of the TVL rising. So as the TVL goes up, as always with yield farming, the APR or APY goes down simply because there's more people there uh, to split the reward structure from the smart con that the smart contract is um, providing. They're rewarding you with Wild X token, so you're not you're not earning a blue chip, you're not earning a stable coin. It's, you're earning the native token currently at twenty four dollars and fifty six cents. That's the chart that we were looking at here. Um, but over two days, you know, I've, I've earned approximately on, on about $375 of Ethereum that I put in, I'm, I'm earning, you know, $47 plus $36. So, you know, a little over 80 bucks, $85, $85 in a couple of days. So the, the return is pretty ridiculous right now. Um, I'm just, I'm just going to let that, I'm going to let that money sit and, uh, accumulate and have some fun with this and see how it mutates and evolves. Um, I don't anticipate, you know, becoming the Prince of Saudi Arabia rich off of this, uh, nor should you, but I think it's, I think it's a, I think it's a fun little cash flow ATM to have in your corner, kicking off daily returns and you can compound it. You can continue to compound it or you can, um, Harvest it, sell your wild X for um, Ethereum or stable coin, whatever you want, swap it out, and then go on your merry way and leave your principal in there to reaccumulate. So that's just um, one fun new project that is off the ground. It's less than a month old, really kind of a couple weeks old that maybe you can make some progress with. So, um, all right, that's it for today's call. I'm going to go to the chat real quick. See if there's any uh, specific questions that you guys have, I'm happy to field any Q and a or um, troubleshooting questions. If we can do that, if not, um, we will adjourn. So let me, let me check it out. Uh, do, 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 do. Where does it show the lock period for wild X? Where does it show the lock period? I am not familiar with a lock period, to be honest. Um, if you go to their documents, uh, there's always that's where you'll always find um, the tokenomics. And sometimes if you just do a control find for lock, Let's go to let's go to each each part just for a quick search. I think it's pretty. Uh, I, don't, I think it's pretty liquid. I don't think there's a lock period. It's just the sales tax, uh, unless you know something that I don't know, John. Uh, I don't know why. I don't know what you're uh, re referring to. If you saw a lock somewhere, um, yeah, I don't think there is a lock. Oh no, yeah. Um, no 30 day locks, as far as I can tell, at least from my preliminary cert research. I think it's just this right here the six, uh, the six percent burn. They have a very short and sweet white paper here, um, in their get book documents. So check that out for sure before investing. And people will start pulling if the APY gets too low. I don't know. Um, because in their in the in their defense, if the APY goes down, it means that there's a higher TVL, and the higher the TVL, theoretically, the higher the price of the token. So they might pull out of the farm, but that they may not necessarily sell Wild X. 
you know, they might, they may just hold wild X. So in this, in this protocol, if you're familiar with sphere finance, you know, this is kind of like holding the sphere token while they have all these other things going on. It's just kind of like the central, um, economic token of the protocol. What I would say is, you know, before making any kind of significant investment, get to know the the senior developers and the community, join the discord, all of the things that I teach in our trainings and get paid daily, like do your checklist um, or don't put an amount of money in there that you care about. So that's just goes without saying, I'm, you know, as everybody understands. So, all right. Looks like that's all we got for today, friends. Hope you have an awesome rest of the week. Um, oh, wait, one more question. Do you have a top five for yield farming? Good gracious, Eric. Yes. Um, top five. Um, really, honestly, you can use the yield optimizers like beefy.com to just uh, sort that. But like yield farming is different in that regard because what you really want to do is is go go places like defi defi llama and go to pools and you want to basically it's kind of like shopping for groceries and you want to check in every week and see what the opportunities are based on APY based on TVL uh, and you kind of want to sort through these things. And uh, for those of you who haven't seen it um, in the training area, we do have that um, module. There's a couple of modules on um, yield farming, specifically the one I'm the one I'm talking about is yield farming 101. Um, it's just kind of like the uh, what am I trying to say? The the basics on how to how to research these yield farms, where where to look, and uh, also I've got a list in the training area of popular investments that you can check out when it comes to sorting through. You know, for example, what Eric's asking is like, what's what's the top five? That's a moving target, is my answer. It depends, and so you want to. Um, you, you want to uh, check out Yield Farming uh, Basic Training 101 right here, and you want to check out the lists of popular investments because things like Beefy, Alpaca, Alpaca Finance, Harvest Finance, um, Folks Finance, uh, Yearn Finance, um, DeFi Llama, of course, where we just were, and then D.Fi. These, these um, aggregators or I guess research tools are where you go do your grocery shopping or your yield farm shopping. And it's, you can just go to explore yields and search by TVL, you know, 1 million or more if you want more certainty. And then you can just keep again, APR hundred percent or more. Currently, there's not one in the market according to D.5 that has that kind of TVL. So let's so let's you know look at 100k or more TVL, and then you've got this one that pops up, and so you just kind of have to mess around with it for a little bit and do some shopping. That's the way I approach it. Can we track that like we are doing with the 100 and 110 projects? Yeah, I, it's really harder to do that, Eric, because of the moving na moving target nature of um, of the farms. Because you've got TVL that's fluid, you've got APY that's fluid. It's just not as um, set it not set it forget. It's definitely not set it and forget it. But it's kind of mixed between holding altcoins and day trading, for lack of better words. Is staking on Ledger less risky than staking on a central exchange? Is there a possibility of Ledger not allowing those funds to be withdrawn? I don't stake on central exchange or Ledger, John. Um, if I'm not mistaken, Ledger is using a proxy exchange to do that staking. 
Um, I'm not necessarily a fan of that, so I can't. I don't have a very technical answer for you. Right. I don't understand how you can hold the keys and still be earning staking rewards. So, um, yeah. I mean, they. I know they definitely use the. They they definitely use a proxy for their different um like swaps and stuff like the they usually use somebody like one inch or a, a different dex and so you're just approving contracts one at a time but i don't know i don't understand how they do the staking so yeah all right that'll be it for today guys hope you have an awesome rest of the week and uh, stay crypto curious talk to you soon <laughs>